Hi folks and welcome to Recreation Destinations where we're talking about all kinds of basic information about your RV. If you have an RV and you don't understand your water systems, your electrical systems, your sewage, your plumbing, any kind of stuff like that, and you want to know more about it, you have come to the right place. Today we're talking about RV electrical systems in particular. If you want to know more about plumbing or other things, then maybe click on a link like right up here. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get right into your electrical system. Now, if you're upside down on watts and volts and amps and don't understand what any of this kind of stuff means, we've got some graphics and analogies to help you try to figure this out, along with a lot of other tips on batteries, electrical systems, things you should buy, things you want to avoid, as well as how your electrical systems work to begin with. So I'm going to get out of the way, and you guys can watch the video. Your RV electrical system consists of a 120 volt power supply, also called shore power, a converter, one or more batteries that equal 12 volts, 12 volt lights and appliances, and 120 volt lights and appliances. Your shore power is basically an extension cord that runs from the pedestal in your RV park or campground to your trailer. The most common type of power supply found in RV parks and campgrounds will be the 30 amp plug. And this is the most common type of plug you will find on RVs as well. Larger RVs, however, often require a 50 amp plug as they have dual air conditioners, washers and dryers, and other amenities. The larger the RV gets, the more amenities it's more likely to have. Not to worry though, these adapters, often referred to as dog bones, will make it possible to plug your RV into any of the three types of plugs. With our 50 amp RV, we need something on occasion to convert 50 amp to 30 amp, just like this. Yes, there are even adapters to plug your RV into a standard household outlet. Keep in mind though that when you're plugging a 50 amp trailer into a 20 amp service, you've obviously got to reduce the demand of electricity, so you won't be able to use everything in your RV. It is also important to note that the difference between a 30 amp service and a 50 amp service is not 20 amps, as it may suggest. A 50 amp service actually gives you two separate 50 amp 120 volt legs, which gives you a total of 100 usable amps. Once the electricity enters your RV, it travels first to your breaker panel. From there, it's distributed to your various 120 volt appliances, such as your microwave, electric water heater, and other things. The most important place that electricity goes is your converter. This is really nothing more than a glorified and modified battery charger. It is, however, very important because almost everything in your RV, other than the things I've mentioned so far, operate off of 12 volt direct current electricity, which is either supplied by that converter or your battery bank. Obviously, if you plan to spend any time in a campground without electrical hookups, you need to have a good battery system in order to run your lights and other things in the RV. That's what makes RVs portable, is the fact that they can operate for some length of time without being plugged into shore power. Now, I mentioned earlier that your converter is nothing more than a battery charger, but it's a smart battery charger. All converters have at least two stages of charging and some, the better ones, the more preferable ones, have three stages of charging. The two-stage battery chargers have a bulk charging mode and a float charging mode, while the three-stage chargers add something called the absorption mode, which makes your batteries last much, much longer before replacing them. Depending on the manufacturer, the converter bulk mode will take your battery somewhere between 14 volts and 14.8 volts. Float mode will keep your battery right at 13.2 volts. And if you have the absorption mode in your particular converter, this will take the battery between 14 and 14.8 volts and hold it there for a couple hours before going into float mode. I'll explain more about this later. All of these functions are automated, so unless you dry camp, you really don't need to worry too much about how the charging system works unless you are having a problem keeping your batteries charged or other abnormal situations. If you do dry camp, however, uh, the following information is very important to know if you don't already. This is especially important if you use a generator to recharge your batteries between uses as you're dry camping. But it's also important if you are planning to put your RV into storage afterwards. 
I'm often asked how long should you charge your batteries after you've run them for a while without any kind of charging system on them. To answer this question you need to know the amp hour rating of your battery or battery bank. If you have a single battery finding out the amp hour should be as easy as looking on top of the battery. However if you have a series of batteries things get a little more difficult. In this example we have a single 12 volt deep cycle battery. The red terminal is the positive terminal and the black terminal is the negative terminal. That is standard and universal in batteries. To keep the numbers simple, let's say that this battery has a 100 amp hour capacity when fully charged. Let's also say that this light draws 1 amp every hour. So that calculates to running this one light for 100 hours before your battery is completely dead. And if you had 10 of these lights running, Yes, that would be 10 hours. So let's talk a little bit about wiring your batteries in series versus wiring the batteries in parallel and the differences between these two. To have series or parallel wiring on your batteries, the first thing you must have is more than one battery. A parallel wiring connection will double the amperage while leaving the voltage the same. While a series connection will double the voltage and leave the amperage the same. Let me take this opportunity to warn you never put 12 volt batteries in series in your RV. Of course that would be 24 volts and would be very very bad. As a rule of thumb on a lead acid battery, the bigger the battery the more amp hours it will have. There's one more combination that we want to discuss and it's probably the most common and that is a series parallel connection. A series parallel connection takes advantage of the very robust 6 volt golf cart battery where it multiplies the voltage and then it multiplies the amperage as well giving you the best of both worlds. This way you can take advantage of the inexpensive longevity of the 6 volt golf cart battery. So now that we've explained that we can begin to get to the question how long do I need to charge my batteries after they've been off the charger for a while and I've been using my RV? Well, there are a couple more details we need to flesh out before we answer that. The first being a 12 volt battery is actually fully charged at about 12.6 volts. That same battery, or series of batteries, is considered half full at 12.2 volts and is considered dead at 11.9 volts. So let's say you've been out camping in the wilderness and you've run your batteries all the way down. Then you plug in your trailer, the converter starts to charge, and look, your batteries are full. And I am going to use cows to explain why that meter is lying to you. Imagine your battery is a nice corral full of green grass and your ampers are cows that you need to herd into that corral. Well in a perfect world your cows or your amperers in this case would spread right out into that battery just in a perfect way. Well you remember when I talked about that bulk float and absorption charge right? Well, This is when that smart charger really comes in handy as long as you give it time to do its job. When in bulk mode your converter charger shoving as many of those little cow electrons into that battery as it can get as fast as it can go. So when you push that button all your monitor sees is nothing but cows cows cows. So while your battery may show it's got a full charge there's still a lot of empty space for those electrons to spread out in there. This is not the time to unplug your converter or your trailer. This is the time to let your charger go into float mode and let all those electrons spread out while that charger herds a few more cattle into that corral. Now if your charger has the aforementioned absorption mode, that's when it's going to try to shove a lot of extra cattle in there that the battery really doesn't think will fit. So I know what you're thinking. I haven't explained anything about watts yet. What is a watt? Well a watt is simply a unit of electrical measure. It's actually a measure of heat. We're not going to talk about that so it doesn't get too confusing. But here are a few mathematical formulas to help you figure out amps, watts, and volts. Volts times amps equals watts. Watts divided by amps equals volts, and watts divided by volts equals amps. 
It's that simple. So finally to answer that question, how long should I charge my battery? Step 1. Determine how many amp hours that you used. If you're not certain how to ascertain your amp hour usage, tune in next week. We're going to talk about that. Step 2. Determine the charging rate of your converter. This will either be found on the charger itself or in the paperwork you got with your RV. Step 3. Divide the number of hours needed by the charge rate and lastly double that amount of time in order for your battery to accept the absorption charge. As a side note, some batteries sold and marketed as deep cycle batteries are really starting batteries or hybrid batteries. If the battery is marked MCA, CCA or has any reference to coal cranking amps or cranking amps, avoid that and get a battery that is actually a deep cycle battery made for RV use. It will last you much, much longer. So hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit more about your RV electrical system. In our next video we are going to go over some options for solar panels. We're going to talk about inverters, probably talk quite a bit more about batteries and other things. And if you have any questions, leave a question in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. And by all means, share this around if you know somebody that would also like to know more about how their RV electrical or any RV systems work. Feel free to browse our other videos. By